All right, we get a lot of questions about where to put the L track if you're not doing a whole kit and you just bought a mule bag. And it's always very difficult for us to answer that question because we don't know what you're finishing your walls with. Um, so a couple of guidelines. Um, first of all, if all you're doing is mounting L track into these ribs with a rib nut, um, then certainly be careful on the weight that you put in there, you know, maybe just your clothes and sleeping gear and stuff like that. But I wouldn't, wouldn't put a lot of weight into it over time that um, will kind of dimple down. And if you have them overloaded, certainly in a rollover, they could just pull those uh, rib, rib nuts out. So that's why we do have the reinforced track uh, or, you know, speed strut here. Um, but if you're doing it, on your own and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna overload the bag and it's, it's, it'll be a great storage for my lighter gear, then what we tend to tell people is make sure that you're attached um, to, if, if basically if you're gonna put your bag from, that starts within this area here, make sure that you're running your L track all the way over to the next rib to capture it so that you're not um, bending the end of that L track down, right? So that's the first thing. You want to be able to span past the area where your bag is going to be ending. The other thing is the distance from the corner out here. So that changes quite a bit. Our distance from that, that corner up to here is 13 and a half inches, or uh, 12 and a half inches, sorry from the very corner up at the top to the center of our track. Um, and that's because we have just about a half inch of, of wood that ends up coming out away from that. And the hole placement on the bag is 12 inches on the top from that back corner here. If you're going down, the hole placement on the bag is 13 inches from that top corner to the bottom to the center of the bottom hole so ours right now if we were to run it all the way up we would be at almost 14 inches to the center line here because we're dropping down almost an inch once we have our wire chase in and the thickness of the wood so that's why it's difficult for us to give a very specific Put it 12 and a half inches uh, off the, the side and 13 inches down because it changes from what people um, put in their van. I will tell you a couple of shortcuts that work. On the ceiling right here, there are two OEM holes that we center the track between. So when you get to the side, of the rib, you'll see these three OEM holes that have sort of broader indentations around them. Go to the side and it, it's, we center it between these two holes on the flat part right there. And that gives you the broadest purchase for, for, for setting a rib nut. So that is a pretty good standard spot. And then as you come down from the side on the wall, if you come down 13 and 3 quarter inches from the top corner up there, that should give you plenty of space. So close counts with doing this because the holes in the bag are large enough to compensate for a good half inch of tolerance and the bag is somewhat flexible. So close does count, um, but just again, taking consideration of, the, of where your finished surface is going to be and then add 13 inches to get to the center of your of your of your uh your hole placement for the center of your track and an easy way to do that is take the actual thickness of your material stick it up here put in the bag and then you can mark that midline on the hole and you'll know where to put your track but uh that's as close as a of a definitive answer as we can give you because again People use so many different types of material and they fur away from this corner in so many different ways to allow for the wire chase um, that it's hard to, to tell people the same dimension every single time. This dimension on the ceiling is a little easier. So if you center it between those two holes, you'll, you'll 
you'll you'll come close no matter what. 